When it comes to Christians to fight a good fight, we have to identify the main battlefield. Today on 10 Minutes of Truth, I'm going to teach on that subject, the battlefield. This is Pastor Hemp Hill. If possible, get your Bible out. It is time for 10 Minutes of Truth. I read today from the book of James, the fourth chapter, I'm going to read verse 1 through verse 3. For whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts, that war in your members? You lust and have not, you kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not, because you ask not. You ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lusts. A question to take seriously in verse 1 is, again, these words. For whence come wars and fightings among you? We have to identify the main battlefield. We have many places of war spiritually in our life as Christian people. But first of all, to fight the battles out around us, we've got to identify our own personal battlefield. So the question again is this. For whence come wars and fightings among you? That's the question. In the same verse 1 now, James 4, we have the answer. Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members? That's the answer. The battlefield in our life is priority to fight is among our own members. The word lust means desire. They come even of your desires that war in your members and that's our main battlefield. Before you and I as a Christian can fight the battles in the exterior world all around us, we have to first of all deal with our own battle, and that's among our own members. When the Bible says we should yield our members unto righteousness, that's the battle we fight all the time as Christian people. A question that takes seriously now, from whence come wars and fighters among you, the answer is, even of your own members, and your own desires, that's where the battlefield is in a personal way. Once we have the battlefield in our life identified, we must make sure we fight the fight to defeat that battle. If we don't, we have a life that's developed here. Verse 2, the life that can be developed. You lust and have not. If I don't deal with the battlefield in my life among my own members, he said, what you're going to have now you will lust and have not. You'll have desires in your flesh, and you'll have not, because the battle rages in your members. Then it says this, you'll kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You're never satisfied. You can't obtain what you're trying to have. This battle goes on day and night in our life. And the third thing that will be developed is, you fight and war. It never stops. 24 hours a day, this battle rages in our life, in our own self. You see, when you and I can get our own self scripturally under control with God's help, then everything else around us is, uh, is easier to deal with. And many times we fight the battles out there somewhere and never deal with our own personal battle. When Paul said himself to examine yourselves to make sure you in the faith. Now, prayer life that is ineffective. If you and I do not get our members under righteousness and do not recognize the battlefield we have and do not yield our members to God, look at the prayer life now that's ineffective because many times we keep on praying. This battle is raging and we keep on praying. Let's see now a prayer life that can come ineffective. Verse 2, Yet you have not because you ask not. And that's what, Christ, that's what God says through James. You have not because you ask not. I mean, to get help in my battlefield and my own members, i got to ask God for help. And the help comes to me through scriptures. I find from the Word of God how to deal with this battlefield in my own life. Then the help comes from the Holy Spirit. The help comes through, uh, through prayer. He says, now, you have not because you ask not. James 1 said, if you lack wisdom, ask God. He'll give it to you uh, freely, to all of us. 
Then it says this, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss. Amiss means wrong. You have the wrong prayer. You ask and receive not because you ask wrong. Why are you asking wrong? That you may consume it upon your lust, desires, or pleasure. Since God knows everything, before we speak, you know what our needs are, he says now, your problem is you, you're asking and you don't receive because what you're doing, you're asking wrong. Because what you're asking for is consumed or wasted upon your own lust, desires, or pleasure. Your prayer life is geared toward your, toward your pleasure. It's, it's geared toward your desires. You see, we have this long list we have before God. Give me, give me, bless me, bless me, send me, send me. That's our desires we have in the flesh. He said, you asking wrong. You asking wrong. Now, God, God does bless us beyond measure. And God does give us many wonderful gifts. And God does bless his children. But our prayer life can become ineffective if we ask amiss or we ask wrong. And our list is for our own lust, our own desires, our own pleasure, our own schedule, and our own pace. And many times, we, that's what we seek God for. But the battlefield in our life keeps going. You realize today that many Christians in their own battlefield, they have inwardly, for all their saved life has never been won. They still have in their heart things from the past, the present. They have no peace that passes the understanding. They have no joy unspeakable and full of glory because the main battlefield they have is, is from within. They have fightings among themselves and inwardly, and they have desires and lusts and their own members, and they, they face this every day. And we see, we see them in church. They look like they're doing wonderful. On the inside, there's a war going on inwardly, raging every day and every night because they will not confront their main battlefield, and that is within. We have all kinds of struggles in life as Christian people. We go through this world as, uh, as citizens looking for a better country. Citizenship is in heaven. We, we understand that. But you will never out there accomplish battles in your life spiritually until, first of all, you and I understand my, bang, my main battlefield is within my own life. Dean Hemphill is my biggest problem. And sometimes people say, no, it's so-and-so out here. No, it's not. When you get your own battlefield under control scripturally and spiritually from God, then out there what you have in trouble with is going to change. It's going to change. Our main battlefield, you put your name in your own life. My, my main battlefield today is Dean Hemphill. That's why Paul says, I crucify myself. I die daily. Because I can get this battle inside of me, under control, and it never goes away. I never graduate. I never say, well, thank God, that's over with. When you think you stand, lest you fall. You must recognize today, inwardly, the battlefield. And use God's word, and through effectual prayer of a righteous person, that is much. Let God help you to win that battle. And then understand tomorrow. It's going to still be upon your life knocking, trying once again to rage in your life in a personal way. So Paul says now, where do your wars and fightings come from? They come from within. It would, it would change your life, your behavior, if it's not dealt with, and you'll have prayers in your life that are ineffective until this battlefield in your life is recognized, identified, and dealt with with the help of God. You see, Paul fought this. Paul also fought this. Romans 7 talks about Paul's inward battles. He had his own life. But then Paul said before he left this world, I fought a good fight. You have to fight a good fight in your own personal life. Let this battlefield be defeated every day of your saved life. Until next time, from Clark's Chapel Baptist Church, I trust with God's help that you will have wonderful days.